All right, so we're going to try to turn on this MacBook Air over here and see what happens. As you can see, when I try to turn it on, the fan doesn't spin. It's dead. Now, if we were to take a look at this under the microscope real quick, you'll notice that a familiar culprit appears to look a little bit questionable. But I'll let you be the judge. Hmm. What's up with that? Well, I do believe we have a job to do here. We are hunting JTAG connectors. So it's time to take our revenge on the JTAG connector. Make sure we'll do like so. Die, JTEC. Die. Die, JTEC. You and your pads can all go to hell. I don't care about a single pad on this JTAG connector. I don't care about the connector. I don't care about the traces going to the connector. I don't care about the solder joints on the connector. I don't care about the usability of the connector. I want this connector to feel pain, suffering, anguish, sorrow, loneliness, irritation. So, we're back. Sadly, it appears that we may actually have to use our brain for this one. Ugh, I was hoping not to have to do that. All right, let's take it apart and see what we get. Now I know that I've got PP3V42 because I have a green light in my charger, which means the one wire work it circuit and the SMC are working. So let's check out the rest. We're going to check out PP bus G3 hot over here. And all right. Let's see, range, 8.58 volts here, 0 volts here. All right, so there we go. So we have a blown fuse for PP bus G3 hot. That is our first problem. And that is going to be F7140 over here. So now I have to see if there's a short to ground on the system side of PP bus G3 hot that would cause that fuse to blow. A fuse is not going to blow for no reason. So if I take my red probe of my multimeter and put it to ground, and my black probe and I put it to the fuse, you'll see that we have a zero direct, zero voltage drop to ground, direct short. Now before I go nuts uh, trying to inject voltage into the board to find where, where the short is, I might as well just take a brief look over the board and see if anything looks out of place to me. Perhaps a capacitor that's exploding, a chip that has a hole in it, anything that's going to give us a hint as to why this has happened. 
So we look by the CPU capacitors to see if any of them is exploding. Common cause. Let's look on the other side of the board here. It's a good idea to look around before you inject voltage. Alright, nothing here is looking too obviously messed up, so let's remove our fuse and inject some voltage and see what we get. Now, we're not going to want to start with more than one volt, just in case any one of the transistors for the CPU is broken, because then we would be injecting a high amount of voltage into the CPU. Do, do note that this rail is responsible for just about every other rail on the machine. So if we have a chip that's trying to turn 8 volts in a 1 volt and it's shorted, it's going to send the 8 volts directly to whatever is in front of it. So if that's something like, say, the CPU, you don't want to inject voltage into here and then have that go directly to the CPU because of a blown FET. That would be very bad. Alright, so that fuse is gone. And I'll use this as my ground. Now I'm going to take my power supply here. Okay. Power supply ground soldered to this ground. And then we're going to solder the power supply positive to where our short lo is located. Now to see what gets warm, because you never know. If my one volt is making the CPU warm, then I know what is shorted. The CPU is as cold as ice, so that's most likely not our problem. Let's turn up the voltage just a little bit here. Can you see what's getting hot? Here, let's try something. We're gonna put a little bit of alcohol on the board. We're gonna see where it evaporates. So, I think it's something over here. Ooh. See this? Yeah. That is not a happy capacitor. It's sizzling. Not a happy capacitor at all. So what we're going to do is we're going to repeal and replace it with a better one. Come on. You can melt off the board. And our short is gone. No more power is passing through. And this time, we're going to be neat about it. And this side over here. All right, that's all we need. Not barely small little clump.
There we go, nice and clean. And now we're going to get a new PP Bus G3 hot fuse. So this area over here needs a fresh fuse. That's what we call fan spin. And that is a fixed board. And as always, I hope you learned something. And now, time for an advertisement. This is our website here, mailin.repair. You will be able to find uh, most of the different cleaners, stencils, connectors, ICs, and uh, small chips that we use throughout these repairs on this website. So here, you'll find the ultrasonic cleaner that we use at the store that's fixed many of the boards that I was unable to fix in the video. This here is shipped straight from the store. Here, you'll see a bunch of LCD connectors. Uh, we've got keyboard connectors. We've got digitizer connectors, and they're all organized organized here. So if you go connectors by type, or you can search by your device. So if we go here, components by device, iPhone, iPhone 6S, it'll bring you to a screen where you'll find a bunch of different parts for your iPhone. The same is true for stencils. We've got stencils over here, like the SMC stencil that it's typically hard to buy directly in America. You'll have to wait a long time to get that from China. Here we've got the uh, some different parts like the um, PP3V42 regulator over here. So this is a PP3V42 regulator. You can actually search by the number on the schematic. And if there are different chips with that same number, it'll bring up all the different chips. You can scroll down and figure out which one is for your motherboard. Because over here, it'll say compatible boards, and it'll list all the boards the chip is compatible with. If you don't want to deal with that, you can even just search by your motherboard. So if I search over here for 820-3462, it will only show me chips that are compatible with my model motherboard. And this was all put together with high resolution pictures that you can compare it to your chip to make sure that you buy the right one. And if you ever have a question, feel free to email, feel free to comment, feel free to live chat. So thank you very much for watching the video. Thank you very much for your patronage if you used our website. We've also got Flux here if you want Flux. We've got... Uh, solder paste over here if you want solder paste and we have even got mouse pads with pictures of my asshole of a cat <laughs>